I'm Jordan. This, this is Unedited. Well, as you can see, we are getting ready to celebrate Canada's 155th birthday a. this coming weekend. A, A, A. A. We'll just say A as many times it's, as possible. Yeah, I'm going to say A. All, count all episode, I'm going to say A. Well, you know what, A? What's that, A? <laughs> you didn't own anything red. I know. <laughs> so you're so you wearing put this my strange glitter. hat on me. <laughs> <laughs> so that he could be in the vibe. And I see that you miss our special guest from last week, Felicia. Oh, yes. Because yes, your yes, shirt yes, yes. is just in yeah. her memory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to wear my Felicia shirt today. So, <laughs> so we thought that we would cut. Kind of <laughs> we thought that we would talk about Canada a little bit, yeah. but maybe not the normal way. Yeah. So, okay, my number one question, because I was embarrassed about this when I was like a teenager once on a radio station. All right. Do you know the words to our national anthem? I do. I know well. Would you sing it or say I, it? I, I won't sing it. I'll say it for you, though. Can you say it? Do it. I think it goes, Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Mm hmm. True. Oh. See, when you're put on the spot. This is not fun. Oh, Canada. For thee. No, I did it wrong, didn't I? You did. I did. Yes. Oh, my goodness. This oh, is, this is, this Canada. Is this right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we stand right, okay. on. Okay, hold on. You know why I'm doing this, you guys? You know why I'm doing this? It's because we were just talking about that guy in the CFL who messed up the Oh, you're so going to go and there. And it's in yeah. my head now. I think, I think it's something like this. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. Yes. True patriot love in all our sons come in. With, With low low and hearts, hearts we see the rise. The true north strong and free. As a Jets fan, you yell true north there, though. But okay. that's a Winnipeg thing. Um, from far and white, oh, Canada, we stand on. Nope. I'm messing this okay, up. Okay, we're moving on. Are we? So, uh, <laughs> so he did know it before. Okay. We talked about this a few days ago, and he I knew it. I was so. put on the spot, and I froze under the pressure. I really didn't. And think as a true you. Canadian, I'm going to apologize to you right yeah. now and say sorry. So, <sighs> you know, I'm because we, know we say sorry in Canada all the time. So, a. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do some fun facts, interesting facts about Canada. Sure, there's probably some that you've heard of before, but I tried to find some that I kind of thought were like a little unique. Okay. Okay, so the first one was, did you know that Hawaiian pizza was actually invented by a man in Ontario? I did not know that. Not a Hawaiian? No. Why no. not a Hawaiian? I don't know. Why I, name I, it Hawaiian? I, I, I have no idea. Honestly, do you like Hawaiian pizza? No. No, me neither. Pineapple? So we're kind I of in the same pineapple. boat here. It doesn't belong on pizza. Yes, right? agreed. There shouldn't That's be any gonna sugar offend so or many sweet on pizza whatsoever. <laughs> we're going to so, offend so many people. So we're it. sorry for that. So, okay, another one. Canada episode, right? We consume more mac and cheese than any other nation. I, bu I, bu I believe that. What does that say about I us? believe that, though. So as a kid, that was my favorite thing to eat. Mac and cheese. Craft dinner. Yeah, it's not it for me anymore. No, I can't eat it anymore. You but get I older. loved it when I was when I was younger. And like my daughters just love it. They think it's the greatest thing ever. So And we consume the most donuts in all the world. Okay. Thank you, Tim Hortons. That is Tim Hortons. Uh, one billion donuts annually. Wow. That's a one lot. billion donuts. <laughs> like, are you freaking kidding me? That's, that's quite insane. A few. Yeah, that's quite a few donuts. Okay, and then another cool fact, Wolverine is Canadian. Oh. And Superman was invented by a Canuck. That makes sense. So that's cool for like any of you um, superhero fans. Okay, and then some fun stuff. Okay, um, 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 what do I do? National animal. Okay, is a beaver. Are you proud of the fact that our national anthem is a beaver? I Does it don't make us know, feel but strong. I, and that great? is what it is, though, right? It is. Yeah, yeah okay, you're right. I got it right. Okay? You're totally right. Oh, my goodness, I'm just donating no, all you're my right. Canada knowledge here. <laughs> Completely the lowest today. temperature ever recorded was in Canada. Yeah. What do you think? How low did you think it went? Uh, probably below minus 60. Minus 63. That's nuts. Eh? In the Yukon, minus 63, people. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good fact to be proud Where of. Where I but... grew up in northern Manitoba, it was like 15 degrees, like less than that every every day in December. So yeah. so I, I don't know, quite know that, but I know, I know, I know cold. So. Um, I like this one. Canada is ranked the most educated country in the world mm. based on the stats that 50% of our population has post-secondary education. Interesting. And it could be because it's more accessible to us yeah. um, than a lot of other parts of the world. But I thought that was a really cool fact. Mm -hmm. 
And my question is, why is the maple leaf so hard to draw? It's difficult. I don't like it. No one so can draw it. Back when we were like in grade school, like in elementary school, we had to draw pictures of that, and that thing still haunts me. So like, to this day. like they got, I never get it right. They got creative on your cup, but this just—you can never make all three sides look exactly the same or the way that they're supposed to look. I would agree. Okay, what else? There's lots of good stuff. These ones are obvious. Our national sport is. Hockey. Hockey and lacrosse. lacrosse. Yeah. Yeah, winter and summer. Although, kind of although, although our soccer team's going to the World Cup this year. So That's true. Go Canada. First time in years. So. And then Canada has more lakes than the rest of the world combined. We have 20% of the world's fresh water. That's oh. really cool. Yeah. No wonder That's we're so wild, beautiful. wild, actually, when you think about when you, it, right? Like the whole world. So. Like, yeah. insane. Anyways, and then this one was fun, and it's true. Canada has an official phone number. one 800 o canada and I called it for this episode <laughs> to make sure it was legit. And it is! So you got to check it out. 1-800-O-Canada. You can get all information about everything. Even when COVID was happening and all the regulations, it was all on there. Yeah. All, anyways, 1-800-O-Canada. Yeah. Can you actually get through if you wait and talk to somebody or no? I only did it to make sure it was legit before we talked about it. Okay. But it, it was a voice recording. I hit English and it was like going through all the functions that you could hit one for this, two okay. for this, three for that. Okay. Maybe eventually. That'd be awesome. And I challenge somebody, if you can, take our facts and verify them. <laughs> See if the person on the line knows them. So. Okay, so you were going to do something different. You didn't want to just do fun facts. You want to talk about stereotypes. Well, yeah. Canadians get known a. for all sorts of stuff. We say A all the a. time, apparently. Yeah. And I know I do, so Me we too. apologize. I say sorry a lot. People say we apologize constantly, and that's probably true mm -hmm. i do something like that's not even my fault and i often go oh sorry about that you know and i've been trying to be conscious of that lately because uh you can't know. say sorry for anything or no. explaining no so that, i get the point right that's what i mean yeah 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 everyone thinks that we're all a bunch of curlers um but you know i do love curling so if you watch the um, other episode of unedited yeah go watch see our curl, curl, curl episode yeah. <laughs> it was very good good for him not good for me. very good episode to check out uh Canada, just, yeah, all sorts of stuff. We're hockey, we're winter, we live in igloos, a lot of people think, right? Which would be kind of cool, actually, for like a week. If yes. we did, right? Yeah, so, there's this place you can go to where they like cut out the ground <laughs> and you like, they have like hotels in the ground of snow and yeah. ice and it's weird. Yeah, when I was younger, we had a survival thing in uh, high school that you could do for a weekend and you had to sleep in a Quincy. So you literally had to like bury yourself underneath snow and make a little, you've done it before, interesting. Oh. So producer Ashley's done it. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, so it's interesting. Like Canadians are known for all sorts of things, but fun facts and whatnot. I'm still thinking about the national anthem. I, I cannot believe I dropped the ball on this. So it's because you wanted to say it and you don't want to sing it because you know, you don't want to okay. bless us with your voice. But the thing is, is that if you sang it, you probably would sing it right. It's I when they so. ask you to say like, what's the words? I need to sing it like, oh, okay. like I have to actually sing it. I think so. We sing it at every game. I know. Like you should know it. You go to enough sport games. I know. I focus too much probably on the true north part in the middle, more than likely. Oh, you're so. waiting for that moment to yeah. say true we, north. We yell true north. Yeah. And I, uh, I must have forgot the rest of the words. So. Let's try one more time. Okay. Oh, Canada. Our, oh, Canada. Our home and native land. True nature, love, and all the sons of man. With, With glowing, glowing hearts, hearts we, we see the rise. Right. The true north, strong and free. From far, far and wide, wide, oh, Canada, Canada we stand on God for thee. God keep our land. Glorious, glorious and, and free. free. Oh, Canada, we stand on. Guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on. I don't know what you want you to guard do for the. There you go. We got it. I think we nailed it, right? <laughs> nailed so it. So I, I couldn't just let that go on, on no, TV not, or, no. you know, on the show like this, right? So it just can't happen. So we really should start editing more. I think so. Then no one would ever know your little mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing for Canada today? You got lots of fun stuff going on. Let us know in the comments what's happening. I know for me, I always think of fireworks. I always think of trying to get by the water. Do you uh, park? Always yeah. has a good, oh, absolutely. like fun day and music and food and games yeah. and stuff down there. Absolutely. If you're in Manitoba, just by chance, and you're in the Winnipeg area, go to the Forks. You won't regret it. I remember when I was younger, they did something at the rec center in Thompson, Manitoba, and uh, there was always a big Canada cake. Always. Oh, that's cool. A huge Canada Safeway cake, and I had to get there to get a piece. <laughs> you know, because as a kid, you got to have priorities, right? Yeah. And so some of you were like, no, that is priority, right? Well, so. and what I've noticed over the years, I mean, the last couple of years have been weird, right? Mm -hmm. But before, when you go on Facebook, if you, like, search fireworks... You can find like small little parks that yeah. are doing fireworks yes. if you don't want to go to like the big main ones where it takes you like five hours to get out of there. Yeah. Um, they do beautiful ones like in the small town. So like in Warren Absolutely. and Martinsville or small cities and yeah. stuff like that all around. Yeah. Plus even just like Lawson Heights Park. 
yeah. someone might do a few fireworks. So just check yeah. those out in your local communities Absolutely. all around. Okay. There's tons of different, people at the lake. They do them from their cabins. Like yeah. I was just going to say, it's a funny joke in those right? small towns. I know this from experience. Your neighbors will have you come. Yeah. Someone's <laughs> going to launch yeah. fireworks in their backyard. Yeah, you don't have to it. leave home at all. So. <laughs> it's going to happen. Anyway, this is going to be a great Canada Day, I'm sure. So happy Canada Day to each and every one of you. Um, we are going to go straight into our In the City segment. We had some fun on a boat in town called the Prairie Lily. Yeah, so love you, it. Yeah, you can check that video out now. Well, we just got off the Prairie Lily boat, which you can see just in behind me. Absolutely beautiful. Um, we were actually a little worried about the weather today, weren't we? Yeah, they were calling for thunderstorms and possible rain. rain and, and cloud. Uh, once again, didn't happen. No, so. <laughs> didn't happen. It was actually perfect. The sun stayed behind the clouds, which yeah. actually was this nice, cool breeze as we went across the Saskatchewan River, went through out underneath all the bridges and stuff. Yeah. Um, they give us a history lesson, many yeah. things that we didn't know about Very our cool. own place that we live in. Yeah, I know how to put a life jacket on now very yep. easily yeah, very, very good demonstration of that and uh yeah, the whole area was nice and uh inside the prairie lily it's all redone yes so, underneath so you yeah. can go underneath or you can be up on deck which then you're kind of outside and yeah it's all restored like to like an yeah. old well, so it's like, said, a, like the old original boats or yeah. something like that it kind of has like a pub feel almost now eh? yeah. like tables and stuff you don't really feel like you're you're on a boat when you're sitting in there no. and then you yeah. start moving and it was only an hour, so it was kind of like really nice way to spend the afternoon. But yeah. they do have like dinner nights where you can like have dinner and have drinks and then go on this cruise. So we really recommend you checking this out because it is a beautiful, beautiful river, boat, place, right? 100%, yeah. Make sure you check out the Prairie Lily this summer. You won't regret it. It's awesome. Well, we're going to get into the talk today. Um, not going to do the national anthem again, I guess. But uh, No. No, but uh, we, we nailed it at the end. But uh, we're going to get into the talk. We're in the book of John, chapter 3, if you want to turn there in your scriptures. Um, and we're going to look at uh, probably one of the most famous things that is said in the scriptures altogether. Quoted anyways. For yeah, sure. and yeah. most people are familiar with this verse, or you've at least heard it somewhere. Uh, somewhere, and we're just going to comment on it and just uh, talk about it a little bit. But just to introduce this section, in chapter 3, there's this gentleman named Nicodemus. Kind of a cool name, eh? I like him. I don't know that I want to yell like, Nicodemus, it's time to have supper! <laughs> <Yeah>. Like what? <laughs> but it is a cool name though, <laughs> eh? Cool name. Yeah, I think we would substitute it as Nick, right? Hey, Nick, yeah, hey. right? So uh, Sorry if that's your name or anything. Yeah, yeah, I do yeah. like it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I call my wife I Nick. Sure Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to keep going here. Uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So he was one of these uh, religious teachers in the culture of the time. And uh, sometimes they were looked at, you know, people had like a reverence for them. And sometimes mm -hmm. they were looked at not so fondly by other people, right? And up to this point, they'd kind of clash with Jesus a little bit based on what he was saying. But Nicodemus was interested. He was one of these uh, teachers who didn't just purely shun Jesus and walk away from him and think that he was a false teacher or something, mm -hmm. but he wanted to know more about what it was that Jesus was teaching. So it says here, this man, that the, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher. Um, come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. And so the interesting part about the story is that he comes to him in the evening. And I wonder why he does that. I wonder why he waits till night. I think in this culture, there's a couple reasons. Maybe he didn't want to be seen. Maybe. Uh, maybe there was an association already with Jesus that a lot of the religious teachers had just written him off because of his irreligious acts that we talked about the last couple of weeks, right? <laughs> and maybe wanted nothing to do with him. Maybe they were frustrated with him. Yeah, like, you know, he just cleared the temple, right? And uh, really uh, had, had, had taken apart what they'd created as like a, a, you know, a place of like idolatry, a den of robbers, he calls it, right? And uh, Maybe so, more people were at home in the evenings. That could be on it. On their own. Yeah, yeah. I don't that, know. That could be it. Another possibility I thought of when I was reading about this was maybe he couldn't sleep. And maybe, maybe it was th this whole thing was keeping him up. Maybe this was That's something true. that was intriguing him. And he maybe. just needed to know about Jesus and who he was. But it's interesting how he addresses him because he says, clearly you're, you're from God because nobody can do what you're doing unless they came from God, right? Mm -hmm. So Nicodemus had all these questions. And so him and Jesus start to have this conversation. They talk about... 
uh, different things. And then Jesus really challenges him by telling him he needs to be born again. And in Nicodemus's mind, he's thinking, well, how can a person be born, born again? again? You're only well, born once, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so I, I encourage you to read through that and check through this because there's some interesting dialogue that happens here. And uh, Jesus eventually tries to get to the, the gist of what he's trying to say about being born again, of what that means, what that looks like. And uh, of course, he's talking spiritually and he's talking about our souls, right? And uh, about our faith in him. And uh, he says this, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so that's one of the more quoted verses, I think, throughout the whole text, right? And uh, I think there's so much in there that would have been different to the people of those days. I'm not convinced all this worship and stuff happened in the temple because people were convinced God loved the world. I think a lot of it was to appease God and mm -hmm. to try to please God or it was just something you did. You owed God, like, you know, your first tenth of whatever you brought. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but like this idea of God loving the world is, is unique to Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this, this idea of God being our father is unique to Jesus. Um, they didn't think of him as father in, in the old covenant, under the old covenant. But, you know, Jesus brought this revelation. He's like a father to us. And so God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So the answer to that whole discussion he was having with Nicodemus was this idea that you need to believe in Jesus. You need to believe that he was sent, that God loved the world and that he came and died for us, paid the price for our sins that we couldn't pay for ourselves. And, uh, Whoever believes in him uh, will never die, but, but have eternal life. And that's the gospel message often summed up in a nutshell. In verse 17, it says, for It God, would have been weird hearing it from Jesus' mouth, though. I think so. And like, how would have you, like, processed that? Especially being the first person, like, recorded here hearing about that, right? Like, this is a direct conversation with him. And so, like, we take it because we have so much history and different things that we've heard to funnel this through, right? But to be the first person to hear those words would have been... Like, what do you mean you gave us your son? Yeah. <laughs> to have each, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. we've had like, well, years and years and years and years and years yeah. to like think about what it meant and to see the end result. He wouldn't have known it yet. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And so the conversation he probably would have left probably with some peace, but also probably with a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get back to questions. So just hang on. There's something I want to do with that practically over the next couple of weeks. The next verse says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order to save the world, that the world might be saved through him. And I love that. I wish that. that part was always more included in it. So do I. You know? So do I, because I think that's a message people need to hear, right? Mm -hmm. I, I wonder sometimes if we're, we take ourselves back into those times and we, we think that God's angry with us or upset with us or, or that we just can't measure up or that we, we just can't fit in. Like you mentioned on a couple episodes ago that... Uh, you, you, you sort of got that vibe from some Christian people that you knew, I did, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I felt that too. I didn't come to faith until I was an adult myself. And uh, I can totally concur with that. But, you know, this idea that God loved me, that he cared for me, that despite what I did, he was there for me. That took me a long time to learn. Mm -hmm. e even after coming to know him, it took me a few years to fully understand what grace was. Well, and I think it's because in life, I mean, this might just be me, but I don't think it is. You always think you have to deserve or earn what you get. Yes. And so when you truly have grace, which yeah. is not earned, yeah. right? And it is given to us. Yeah. It's so hard to wrap my head around that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how can I, what does he even, why does he even care about me? Yeah. Like, like what in the grand scheme of things can I even do? Do you know what I mean? I and agree so 100%. I think it's natural for us to think that way, yeah. to be honest. Oh, but, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And we live in a culture, I think that celebrates that. that can you, you, you get what you earn, right? And, yeah. and you go after it and you put the time in, you put the hours in. And then God comes at us and says, you know what? I love you based on none of that, mm -hmm. but based on who you are. And to me, that's the gospel message, right? Yeah. Based on that you're, you're, you're a child of God that needs to be uh, reborn again, right? In him. And so, uh, yeah, God didn't send his son to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And I think that's a message always worth talking about, always worth spreading, mm -hmm. always worth letting people know. Maybe you've struggled with that. Maybe you, you've, you've had doubts. Maybe you've had people tell you that God doesn't love you. I'm here to tell yeah. you he does. <laughs> and he cares about you very much. Um, maybe... Uh, this is something that's tough for you to grasp. And I, I don't want to put any pressure on you with that because it is tough to grasp sometimes, mm -hmm. but the truth is the truth. And we believe that the truth's written in the word of God and, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. So that's my good news for you today. Mm -hmm. That's what we looked at in the book of John chapter three. And, uh, in a few moments, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make this more practical. Now what? 
and so we're going to talk about what we just uh, looked at in the scriptures. Uh, one of the ways I think we make this practical for us today is Nicodemus. We talked about in John chapter 3 with someone who had all sorts of questions for Jesus. Maybe you have questions for Jesus. Maybe you have questions about this book. I, my, my, my challenge and take home for us maybe this week and over the next couple of weeks, I want to invite you to continue to read ahead in the book of John. And every time you see something you don't understand, make a note of it mm. and feel free to send us your questions. And these are things that we'd like to discuss. These are things we'd like to at least um, help hopefully give some understanding towards. And uh, yeah, we'd love to love to take you through that. So, uh, and uh, you know, the other take home for this is that God does love you. And uh, if you don't have a relationship with him, I invite you to start one right now. It's as simple as just coming to him and praying uh, a prayer, confessing your sin, letting him know that you need him and that you want to live with him, live for him and uh, walk with him all your days. And uh, you could even, you know, really just pray and thank him for the words of John 3, 16 and verse 17 today. Yeah. And you know what? It's it's okay to have questions. Absolutely. And doubts. I think that's part yeah. of your faith journey. Mm -hmm. uh, even us, like, you know, you might think that we know oh so much more than you, but yeah. we have a lot of questions. Yeah. And we talk about them together. We talk about them with our friends, with our family. We go to the word, we pray, Absolutely. right? There's all these, but it is part of your faith journey is to have doubts and to have struggles and to have questions. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to just take a second and we're going to pray as we close out today. Um, we hope that you find something amazing to do for Canada Day yep. uh, with your friends, or your friends, your family. Uh, but yeah, let's pray. So Lord, I just come to you now. Um, there are many people who probably are tuning in who have some struggles or some doubts or some questions, Father. And I just ask that you reveal those to them and that they are bold and that they ask questions to people that they trust around them or maybe they even shoot them this way so that we can help them with them too, Father. And Lord, if there's anybody out there who's struggling with who they are, uh, maybe their circumstances, maybe their past, the things that they don't think that they're good enough to come to you for, I just ask that you release them of that, Father, and just show them them how much you love them and how much mm -hmm. you want to be their everything, their joy, their love, their strength, their peace, Father. So I thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, okay. you have an awesome week and enjoy July 1st. Yeah. Oh, there Canada. We there we go. Oh, Canada. Cheers. Have Thank a great you. week. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> We're all about being weird. Yes, we are. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to do that. I elbowed her, but I didn't mean to. <laughs>